We've been planning our trip here for a few months now, but little did we know at the time, one of our all-time favorite YouTubers would be here right before us. So we thought there would be nothing cooler that we could do in Campeche, Mexico than live like Alan Por El Mundo for a day. To start off our day, we always like to take Laska for a nice long walk on this big, beautiful malecon that they have here in Campeche. Yeah, it's one of the best I've seen in Mexico. It's six kilometers long. And across all of that, there's a bike path, a walking path, and then a really nice big sidewalk next to that. We need to get ourselves a good hearty breakfast, so we're gonna go where Alan went. Something really cool about Campeche is it has this gigantic fort with basically a full city inside of the fort. So this place is right inside this wall. Here in Campeche, it's required to wear masks anytime you're in public, but when you get to a restaurant and drinks or food arrive, you can take them off. I had expected that things would be much more relaxed here in Campeche because the state is green on Mexico's traffic light COVID designation. I believe this is the only state currently that's in green, but I think they're very proud of the fact that the cases are so low, so the security measures that they're taking are even more strengthened and more strict than I was expecting myself. What we got here for breakfast are some very typical things of Campeche. First, these are enchiladas campechanos, campechanas, which are unlike any enchiladas I've ever seen. The most typical dish of Campeche is pan de cazón. It's actually not bread though, even though it's called pan. It's made with four tortillas, tomato salsa, and then dog fish. We're just obsessed with our panuchos lately, so we had to get some panuchos de cochinita. Oh, yeah, I believe we tried the pan de cazón. I like the light tomato sauce, but also has a bit of a fishy flavor. It definitely has fishy essence. Mmm, I like those. See how these compare to Yucatan. Oh, they're my favorite. I love cooking for people. Allow me to review this like Alan would. Vieros, este es riquísimo. Muy recomendable. That was my first time trying pan de cazón, and while I thought it was good, I actually preferred the other dishes. For about $3, you can get those amazing enchiladas, and the panuchos were also really tasty. But all in all, Marganso was amazing. Alan definitely steered us in the right direction with that one, and I hope <laughs> the rest of the day is just as awesome. Now that we're back at our Airbnb, I'm gonna give you a little tour. We're on one of the main streets inside the fort. It's an amazing location, really pretty and close to a lot of restaurants. We are inside these massive double doors with an extremely secure, I think, iron fence <laughs> or iron gate, I mean. Coming inside, we have a dog. Hi, dog. <laughs> We are really, really loving this Airbnb. It's in an extremely historic building. We're not actually sure how old it is, but given that Campeche is about 500 years old and this is within the fort walls, our guess is that it's at least a couple hundred years old and it's got these beautiful high vaulted ceilings. I think in this room it's about 20 foot ceilings, which is crazy. Uh, and then I think this used to be some kind of store as well, as you'll see in the next room. So we're going to walk through this doorway built for giants <laughs> into the dining room where they've got set up a nice big table and the perfect size kitchen for staying here for one week. Hi, Leska. Here's what Jordan was talking about, the reason we think it used to be some type of a store. It says, La Aborroteria Gourmet y Terraza meaning the grocery store, gourmet with a terrace. Here is that terrace outside of, once again, gigantic doors. They have it set up with a little table and chairs and an umbrella for shade. And then a pool, which I think is probably pretty rare in this city. <laughs> Hi, Nazca. You wanna go for a swim? Nope. <laughs> yeah, this is a huge pool. It's been really nice to cool off. Now going back inside, I'm gonna show you the bedroom where there is this king-size bed and it's been so comfortable, which is totally invaluable to us during our travels. They've got a dresser, what do you call this, armoire? <laughs> a little closet set up. And then coming through here, we have this 
lovely bathroom. Hello. Now, in total Alan por el mundo style. La prueba del colchón. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie, given the theme of this video, what would you think of a tour in Espanol? Ahora comenzamos un tour de nuestro Airbnb en Espanol. Bienvenidos a nuestra casa. <laughs> Aquí estamos en la sala con un techo muy, muy alto. Mira. Es unos 6, 7 metros. Sí, y aquí está mueblado con muebles antiguos y el edificio creo que tiene mm, 100 o 200 años, pero no sabemos uh, cuántos. Y ahora estamos en el comedor y por allí la cocina. Vamos a la terraza con una mesa y sombrilla y una piscina muy, muy grande. Mira, muy grande. Perfecto cuando hace calor. Aquí es nuestra perrita, Laska. Laska. ¿Tienes color? Laska. She doesn't want to go in the pool. Look, look at her What? clog my head. Oh, Laska. <laughs> Tiene miedo. <laughs> She's like, por favor, no. <laughs> oh, jeez. Ok, y vamos a la habitación. Con una cama king, muy grande y muy cómoda. Y, don, ¿qué más? Prueba del colchón. Prueba del colchón. En definitiva, me gusta esta casa muchísimas. Cinco estrellas. If you're anything like me, you have a friend or a family member who's really difficult to shop for for Christmas. Well, I have an idea for you. I think this is something that just about anyone would love because almost everyone has some kind of back pain or stiffness. Even if they're young, they're probably sitting at their desk all day or on their bed in a position that's not great for your posture. Well, these chirp wheels allow you to roll out your back. They come in three different sizes and we recommend getting a three pack. You just roll out on them and it feels amazing. But if you want to check them out, head on over to tangerinerollers.com that's our affiliate link and it will take you straight to their website. Now we are exploring around the center of the city and here is El Centro del Centro, but sadly because of the pandemic, this entire area está cerrado. It's closed. Again, because of Alan's recommendation, we're looking at taking the trolley tour around the city. We need eight people total before we'll leave and we're the first two. So we have to wait for six more to arrive. Got our two tickets, 100 pesos each. A moment ago, we didn't have enough people. Now I think we have plenty. Campeche, Mexico is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site because of its well-preserved Baroque colonial architecture and complex history. Until now, we've only explored this harbor town on foot, so it was cool to be a trolley passenger and see the monuments scattered across the city, the unique and beautiful architecture, and other historically significant details of Campeche. Well, we stopped halfway through the tour and we have 10 minutes here mm -hmm. and I have to go get some recommended ice cream. I'm trying pitaya and sapote. Pitaya first. Oh, that's, that's good. Interesting. Sapote is an interesting flavor. Maracuya. Mmm. Coco. You should try the maracuya. Always a favorite. I got passion fruit and coconut. He let me try a bunch of them without even me having to ask, and my goodness, they're all so good. I love maracuya. Mm -hmm. Can you get me some of that? Mm -hmm. Yum. <laughs> so tart and so fresh. While we have 10 minutes to explore, we notice that this neighborhood has its own open center park, which means. Yee! El Centro del Centro! I'm a little scared to step in that one because there's like a ring of burn poop from that. Oh no, 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 no. I, don't, I cannot be responsible.
responsible for all that chaos. What? You no, no. Uh-uh. You go ahead. <laughs> as far as we know, that tour is only offered in Spanish, so and with our intermediate level, I did, to be honest, have a little bit of a hard time keeping up with what he was saying because of the street noises and the loud vendor speaker car people. Yeah, I, I was able to understand probably about 80% of the words he was speaking, but because he was talking so fast and he never ran out of things to say. For the entire hour, he was talking the whole time. All that said, but, for 100 pesos, even if you don't understand a single single word that the tour mm -hmm. guide says, I still think it gives you a really good picture of the whole city and you get to see a whole lot in about an hour. Since we're done with that tour, we decided to hop in a cab really quick. It costs 45 pesos and it's gonna be a 10 minute ride to our next destination. That's something I've liked about Campeche, although there is no Uber here, the taxis have been very fair with the pricing. After driving up a really steep hill, we are now at El Fuerte de San Jose El Alto. Good job with that <laughs> name. I could not put that string of words together to save my life five minutes ago. <laughs> to get into this one, you go through this curvy pathway here, walk across the ditch, then the drawbridge, have our temperature taken and put some hand sanitizer on, and then we pay. So it costs us 45 pesos each to get in, and then also 45 pesos for you guys, the camera. <laughs> And so now we get to explore. We're up here at the very top of it with this amazing bird's eye view of Campeche down there and the water. On each of the corners up here, there's these little peepholes, but you gotta be really skinny. Okay, I lied. Only on three corners. That one doesn't have one. <laughs> Jordan, can you see the pirates coming? Check for pirates. Three o'clock. <laughs> I know. at the fort is a museum that they have set up with artifacts and here behind me this used to be the guards kitchen where they would feed the guards and the troops and various people and apparently it was a very bustling place and now we're in another room with different artifacts these are all very valuable made of gold and gems and I see here they have braille for people who are blind but it's kind of ironic because right next to the braille it says no tocar meaning don't touch <laughs> which is essential for somebody who needs to read braille <laughs> guy out. He's like nodding his head. <laughs> this guy's got moves. So if you're coming to this place, I actually don't recommend going inside. I recommend just walking around the outside. I didn't find the inside too impressive and the employees were pretty rude here. So just enjoy the outside. I really like the serpent entrance and the yellow painting on here. Hopefully you can get the benefit of the fact that we paid and were hassled by the employees um, to know what the upper part looks like. But honestly, you do have just as good a view out here. And from outside, you can see all the iguana pirates that are trying to get past this fortress. <laughs> to be fair though, this is a pretty cool piece of Campeche's history, so we really do appreciate it for that element, but we were definitely put in a sour mood by the rude employees. Wow, that is one big Benito water statue. Since we didn't know exactly where we were going when we went to that fort, we didn't think too much about the fact that it was way up a hill and that probably not too many taxis would be going up around that way. So we're making the walk back, which is not too bad since it's basically all downhill. We've been walking about 10, 15 minutes and it's another 10, 15 minutes until we get to a taxi station. Once we got to Galerias Campeche, which is a mall, it was pretty easy to find a cab and he only charged us 35 pesos to get back so our 25 minute walk saved us 15 pesos 10 pesos and so our cabs all around the city have been between 35 and 45 yeah um, and we narrowly made it in here because as you can tell from Jordan's shirt the heavens opened up and it's mm -hmm. raining like crazy now Thank you. 
What have you been doing all day? What have you been doing all day? One of the cool things that you can do in Campeche is actually climb up onto the fort and walk up along in some places on this wall, which is what we planned to do this afternoon until the rain came along and it just now pretty much cleared up. So we're going back to our Alan por el Mundo day. But that's something you can do if you're in Campeche. Maybe we'll have to do it on our next trip. We're at this statue, it's called Angel Mayo or Mayan Angel, and this is where we're told is the best place to see sunset. The problem is, I don't know which way is west because there's so many clouds, and I've got my compass app here, but it's <laughs> like, I don't, how do you work this? It's, <laughs> it's not doing anything. Well, wherever the pretty colors show up, but we don't know if there's gonna be pretty colors because it's been raining a lot today. So, we'll find out. <laughs> Do I look like an angel? If you put your arms down. Angels have arms too. <laughs> well, tonight's sunset was kind of a bust because of mala suerte due to the weather. Campeche actually does have some spectacular sunsets though. We came back with Laska on another day when there wasn't any inclement weather and we actually got to see the sun go down until the very last moment. Laska was loving it, we were loving it. It was so pretty. Gracias. Okay, so we just took a cab to our dinner spot, which I could not be more excited for because I am starving. <laughs> starving. I ate most of the breakfast. Because it had a lot of onion, but I was glad to try it anyway. But I'm going to be even more glad when I get some more food in my tummy because it's been a long time. And we have, I have 17,700 steps. We've wow. done a lot of walking today. <laughs> I am pumped for this dinner. We are at Senaderia Portales de San Francisco. The tour guide on that little trolley tour we took earlier, highly recommend this place, and specifically the horchata here, as did Helen. I didn't really, this came out, it's like a smoothie. It's like blended, like a frappe horchata, and it's very good. Mm -mm -mm. It's on the sweet side, so I'm sure you're, it's your Oh yeah, favorite. it's right on my alley. <laughs> So the first thing that we ordered is called a merienda, and it's kind of like a tamal, but it's made with beans and then a type of pork fat. I've never tried this before, and also it comes with a tomato salsa. So let's see how it is. Where have these meriendas been all my life? I know. So good. Everything here has been so good. I'm coming back here every night for the rest of our trip. We only have one night left, sadly. <laughs> so I'm coming here every night. <laughs> <laughs> and I got three panuchos, which actually look different than the panuchos that they serve in Merida, in Yucatan. And I think I read somewhere that they flip-flop what panuchos and salbutes are. But um, in any case, these look amazing and I'm gonna give it a try. Yep, amazing. I love all the food here. My review of that place fue increíble, muy muy rico y muy recomendable. This video, by the way, is part of our ongoing series where we are traveling across Mexico. Where we are headed next is not a surprise. Thank you for sticking around to the end. We are going to Veracruz. So if you want to see those upcoming videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And one more thing. <laughs> Gong that bell so you'll be the first to be notified when our videos come out. And we will see you on Saturday.